Sari Manok is a painting of renowned local painter Hernando Acampo, finished in 1953. It is an artwork that Acampo based on the Sari Manok, a legendary Maranawan bird depicted as a fowl with colorful wings and feathered tail, holding a fish on its beak or talons, with the head profusely decorated with scroll, leaf, and spiral motifs, and is said to be a symbol of good fortune. We seek to highlight the things that makes this piece of art special and how its different elements contribute to its beauty. However, before diving further into the technicalities of the painting, it is important to revisit its history to gain a better view of the context of the artwork. Picture this. It is the 1950s and you are in a European-style house found on Calle Anluage in Binondo, Manila. You see its varnished wooden floors, capiz shell windows, walls ornate with floral carvings, and ceilings adorned with glass chandeliers. As you look to your left, you see a painting hung on the white wall that seemingly has a scene depicted on it. Three farmer women going about their day, arranging the harvest that they had, and having a chat under a luscious and green tree. This is one of the various artworks of the famed Filipino artist Fernando Amorsolo, entitled Fruit Pickers Harvesting Under the Mango Tree. He was known for his tradition of painting, which focused on photographic realism. In most of his artworks, he attempted to capture reality as unitary. We can see that the frame here serves as the window of the viewer to this single actuality that he always curates. At this time, his painting style dominated the local world of visual arts and was highly regarded, as evident in them being considered as the standard for what his art was and what was seen to be beautiful. Ocampo did not agree with this view of reality as something unitary. Rather, what he believed in is that reality is multiple and subjective to the viewer. This is evident in his utilization of the cubism style of painting wherein the figures are presented in geometric shapes and forms and there is no one general flow from each side of the frame. He portrayed this in many of his works throughout his career. This style is also what Ocampo used in painting our highlighted artwork. This is the Sari Manok as illustrated only using oil paint on a 94 by 110 cm canvas surface. The colors used in the painting is a combination of red, orange, black, brown, green, and violet, which is inspired from the word sari, or various, and also represents the colors of the clothing used by the indigenous people native to that area to signify the origins of the figure of the sari manok. Like what was mentioned earlier, the style of painting used for this artwork is cubism. Ocampo also made use of a combination of solid geometric and organic shapes that do not mix with the background. The predominant use of dark or brown tones, which served as the shadow of the sari manok in the painting matched with bright, mostly white outlines, gave shape to the figure to maintain the wholeness of the elements of the painting. It is also evident that every part of the artwork is very detailed and seemingly took a lot of time to complete. As evident, the background was not made with just simple strokes from a brush. The color gradient of brown from the background is done by doing a pointillism style of painting because we can clearly see each point that the colors are composed of and how it transitions from one tone to another. So who is Hernando Ocampo as an artist? Hernando Ocampo had various art periods wherein we are able to see the evolution of his artistic style. First, the Amorsola period, which mainly focused on curating artworks that had elements of photographic realism, similar to Amorsolo. After this is the proletariat period, wherein he focused to illustrate social realities of the poor and the war struck. Consecutively, he had a transitory period, wherein he completely depersonalized and simplified the figures and objects that he drew. His works became more abstract and malformed, and at that point, was moving from the style of social realism to neorealism. This was actually the period when Sari Manok was curated. Finally, he had a mutants period and a visual melody period, in which his signature visual melody style, which we'll discuss later on, would reach its height. A contemporary of Hernando Ocampo is Vicente Manansala, another famous Filipino artist. Ocampo and Manansala were colleagues participating in the same realm of art history. Both were members of the 13 Moderns and together led the modernist or neorealist movement of art in the country as a manner to veer away from the predominant style of painting 
popularized by Fernando Amorsolo. It may seem like both of them utilize the same painting style. However, it is important to remember that even with their similarities, they were both still able to create a cubism style that is unique, effective, and most importantly, their own. For Manan Sala, his style of cubism feared towards transparent cubism. We can see his signature style in full display in some of his works such as Harana, Familia, Magsasaka, and Pagkain. He does this so well by carefully placing the shapes and patterns of both the figure and the background and masterfully superimposing the two to each other. The shapes utilized in the paintings are geometric, which allow him to do so. Despite this, the shape and form of the figure is still not compromised, all thanks to his use of color, which helps distinguish the shapes from other shapes. Manansala also makes use of bright and diverse color combinations to project a playful and vibrant visual art that has become one of the staple characteristics of his works. At the other end of the spectrum is Hernando Ocampo. He was known to have been heavily influenced by two major artistic movements, Cubism and Divisionism. His art was more influenced by Synthetic Cubism, a style that grew out of Analytic Cubism which geared towards Expressionism in what he termed as Visual Melody, which is a form of abstraction made popular by him. This is evident in many of his works, which was fully manifested in his work Genesis. Ocampo's style is characterized by the smart use of colors and its tonalities and shadows, and combining it with the use of simple biomorphic shapes that have little to no depth and a toned-down use of perspectives and vantage points. These shapes were inspired both from the country's landscape and his fictional writing influences. He even combined this approach with a touch of divisionistic elements, which resulted in a brighter radiance of the subject through the mixing of the colors of his paintings in order to achieve a richer form of abstraction. Ocampo also makes use of the darker tones of colors, and from time to time, he would even just use a single color and utilize its different use to further emphasize and showcase his technique. Moreover, he also uses shadows to make the subject pop out of the painting more. Again, it is important to note that Sare Manok was created by Ocampo in his transitory period. As a result, the technical style used by Hernando Ocampo to make Sare Manok was an early version of his eventual signature style, abstraction art which uses bold and interlocking forms and texture that are enclosed in areas of contrasting color, or what he called as visual melody. All of the shapes and figures in his paintings are solid, unlike in Manansala's transparent cubism. There are no lines that transcend from the background up to the figure being highlighted, and each and every shape is rendered as a unique, solid shape in the painting. What made his abstract cubism appealing is the fact that his audience is encouraged to think about the deeper meaning and is actively involved in making sense of his work, because unlike figurative art, which leaves very little to the imagination, non-objective art was open to much more interpretation, especially those that went beyond their prior imagination and intention for their art. One could say that his artwork's meaning does not stagnate, because it can vary for the same person depending on how they perceive it. Speaking of perception, one may notice that there are some missing parts in the painting when compared to the traditional Sari Manok. The body of the bird seems to be lost, but it is also worth mentioning how Ocampo did not leave behind the detail of the fish carried by the Sari Manok. To ordinary people, the Sari Manok is just a colorful fowl, and they often omit the presence of the fish dangling on its beak or caught inside its claws. As the Sari Manok is a symbol of good fortune and power, the fish is said to symbolize the blessing and fortune itself. Other parts of the painting that deviate from the non-abstract Sari Manok or its differently shaped head with its distinct chain attached to its beak on the upper left corner and its tail on the upper right. A wing can also be seen on the bottom right but avowedly out of place. There is also neither a body nor a stand that is evident. Ocampo's art style provided the audience a break from the Amorsolo style of painting and in a way, helped change the assumption that there is a formula for creating art or there is a standard from which the artist bases one's art. Moreover, Aside from cubism being used as a way of reminding the audience of the flatness of the canvas, it is also used to portray the multiple perspectives that surround the subject. This is because the legend of Sari Manok was not confined to Mindanao only. It did not take long for it to spread across the nation and for it to be integrated into the unique set of culture and tradition of each place in the country. As a result, many origin stories, myths, and tales regarding the Sari Manok emerged.
However, similar to how different shapes come together to successfully create an image in cubism, even though the realities regarding the sari manok is so diverse and sometimes even conflicting, it all comes together to create something that all Filipinos can share and have in common. As time passed by, this mythical figure has become a cultural symbol and one of the figures that have bound and represented our country and its people. In conclusion, Ocampo as an artist allows us to realize that a sense of radicalism can still be present in art. Though his works were different at that time, he knew that by dissociating himself from the traditions of the past and deviating from the norms, it would allow him to open up a new art movement that would possibly change the course of art history as time progresses. As time continues, he must be venerated as a pillar of modern art and one who showed courage to redefine art reality and present his version of it. His works gave a refreshing look at Philippine art, which allowed the viewers to see art in a new light, sparking newly found curiosity and appreciation for it. Because even though their creations are different from the accustomed conventions, they are very much still inspired from our culture and represent a piece of our rich identity. Special thanks to Ran Santos, Lance Caparas, and Rafael Abital, our script writers, Sofia Ali, our editor, and Dr. Alvin Yapan, are a great professor.